Welcome to three Stuart steam plants, cutting a chimney to size. Part 13. After a lot of effort, I remove a chimney that was firmly stuck in the hole in a 501 boiler mounting. After removal, I accurately cut it to the correct length, using two different methods that seem to work fine for me. There are three boilers, but there's always one that isn't right, and the one that isn't right is the 501 boiler with the very tall chimney, which is firmly stuck in the hole. And no, there isn't a grub screw still in position. I made sure of that before I started. Unfortunately, I do have a bit of a medical problem at the moment, and I've been having various tests, including a CT scan, to have a look at the problem. I know this has nothing to do with the job, and it's nothing to do with the three-in-one oil that's shown in the image at the moment. I won't go into detail about the medical condition, not from my point of view, I really don't mind. But as one viewer said to me a while ago, I don't want to watch videos about prostate cancer, I want to watch videos about steam engines. Well, here we have videos about steam engines, with a small amount of vague medical things in the video itself too. In any case, there's not much happening at the moment. I'm waiting to let the three-in-one oil do its stuff. And hopefully, after a while, I should be able to remove the chimney. I've always been lucky enough to be extremely strong, which over the years I have found to be particularly useful in a variety of applications. But now, if I apply too much physical strength to something, then I have medical problems. So basically, I'm taking it easy. I am applying quite a lot of pressure to this chimney. I even thought, well, there's a hole in it. Why don't I fit something in the hole to rotate it? But the hole is a bit small, and I didn't want to drill it any bigger than it already is. And none of the screwdrivers that I had close at hand were the right size to fit in the hole. So it was down to good old manipulation, being very careful not to apply too much pressure to the job. I should really insert a fanfare at this point, because I finally did remove the chimney. Then I put it into my Myford lathe, and used the point of a carbide tip tool to cut a groove all the way around it. Why didn't I use a small parting tool? Well, to be honest, I was quite concerned that the chimney may get damaged as the parting tool broke through. All I did was cut quite a deep groove in the steel chimney to create a guide for the next part of the operation. I fitted this Dremel cutter grinder into my Proxon motor tool. This is a really well designed tool. Not only is it very good quality and lasts a long time before it wears down, removing it is very simple. You just press the disc towards the chuck, rotate it and lift it off the specially designed holder. It really is a piece of clever engineering. You can see now why I turned the groove in the steel chimney. You may be thinking, why am I going to all this trouble? It would have been a very simple job to just mount the chimney in a lathe up in the main workshop, which is bigger than the Myford. Then I could have just parted off the bit that was sticking out, not the main chimney itself. But alas, that would have marked the paint, and I really don't want to repaint the chimney again. It was painted using heat-resistant paint, and then a top coat of HMG paint sat in black. I've just noticed some runs in this paint very near the base of the chimney, so it is going to need a little bit of a rub down, but nothing like it would do if I clamped it in a large chuck in the lathe. You will notice as I work my way around the chimney with the cutting disc, it's getting smaller as it wears away, and there's quite a lot of metal particles and dust on the bench, right where I'm working. So I think the time has come to stop the job, clean away all the dust, and fit a new cutting disc. And this is the way it fits. What a clever idea. Much better than messing about with a screwdriver on the cheaper cutting disc that you can get, which don't last very long at all. By now, as you can see, the cutting disc has gone all the way through the metal and that in conjunction with the groove that's already there 
makes it really easy to keep this tool in perfect alignment, well, apart from when it slips like that. Once I've finished the cutting job, I'll clean up the end. There's not much further to go now. I should meet up with the existing groove anytime soon. I didn't actually have to stop the job a couple of times because the tube was getting too hot to handle. And I'm still not going to wear gloves in the workshop. I could have used the cloth, but I didn't bother. In no time at all, the cutting tool had done its stuff and the end part of the chimney was detached from the main bit. To finish the job, I used the rotary cutting disc to clean up the chimney end where it was a bit raggy. And now, when I fit the shortened chimney, which is the one on the right, back into the boiler, it's about the same size as the other one. Or at least it will be when I've pushed the chimney a bit further into the hole. There is another very important job to do on these two 501 boilers. I'll show that possibly in the next episode. But that's it for now. As always, stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.